we are running into challenges that we've never faced before, <clears throat> which is that a lot of the things that we take for granted today are going to go away. Um, one of the biggest challenges in a Pakistani context, <clears throat> other than the fact that there's 30 million people, uh, school, children who are not in school, and there's so many people who are unbanked, um, and there's so many sort of water like um, inefficiencies in farming. Like, you know, I, 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 I read 50% of the water in a typical farm is wasted, and the, the big government solutions tend to be, you know, really gigantic and really expensive, but a startup can come in and nimbly experiment with things to make things more efficient. Um, <coughs> but we need to do those things, right? Like in two of the things in this trip that, that have really like struck me is one is um, Pakistan and the U.S. face a medical debt crisis. Um, in the U.S., 20 million people are, or 20% of the population is on the brink of bankruptcy, mostly because of medical debt, right? You go into a hospital for a few days and your, your bill is, you know, $300,000 and you can't afford to pay it. So now collectors are harassing you and running after you and stuff like that. <coughs> Nobody has a solution for that. Pakistan has the same issue because we don't have universal health care. So if someone goes into a hospital for like a month and they have a bill of 56 lakh rupees and they don't have any property to sell, so how do you solve this problem? So that's one and the other one is smog, right? For the past two years in Pakistan, we've had this acrid smog going on. The air quality index is that that's like smoking 46 cigarettes a day. So while we're all happy doing our little startups, doing food delivery and doing, you know, laundry services or whatever, Uber for rickshaws, 20% of, of our population might start developing lung cancer or respiratory diseases in, in two to three years. Our hospitals are just not ready for that type of intake of patients. Our world is not ready for that take intake of homeless people. Um, the way we think about property investment has to be rethought from the ground up. The way we think about earning money has to be rethought from the ground up. Now, all of these are large unknowns. If you remember, like yesterday in my session, I talked about unknowns, like impossible targets that we don't know how to solve. <clears throat> That's how you start exponential thinking. But And nobody has an answer to that. Like the U.S. doesn't have an answer to that. Nobody has a good solution to the fact that people are literally dying in Sudan from hunger. They're walking and they drop dead because the land is completely like, you know, uh, the, the, the biggest like food production crisis is happening in Sudan. So, so whoever solves these problems, they, they would have a massive opportunity. Those would probably become huge companies and these would be for-profit companies. But these are the problems to solve. And Maybe it'll take a lot of money, maybe it'll take a lot of ambition, maybe it'll take a lot of nights and weekends, but this is for sure that once someone says, I'm here to solve that problem with a really good idea, there is a whole world of people willing to support that, right? Uh, there's a venture accelerator I'm building uh, in Seattle, uh, inshallah. That's a global venture accelerator on global social impact based on exponential thinking. So we're pulling together the best minds in the world to get the best thinkers in the world to solve these problems. And I know that the support is there. People are willing to support it. There's investors in the valley who only want to invest in impact investing now. <clears throat> but the reason they're doing that is to say, look, the missing piece is the innovation and the ideas. Whoever has it from anywhere in the world, let's support them, right? So I'm really passionate about figuring out how we can do that. Um, and the key message is, because a lot of people think this is about social enterprises or about nonprofits and there's no money in that, blah, blah, blah. These are, this is where the money is. If you want to build the next billion dollar company, it's going to be in solving these types of things, I think. So um, I hope that, uh, you know, people take this seriously. <laughs> I'm going around trying to like be one of those people who comes in from far away and says, be warned, here's a warning. But, uh, uh, you know, inshallah, like there's, there's a lot of opportunity for impact as well as uh, value here. One other couple of things I'd mention is <clears throat> the huge amount of people right now that are displaced without a country, right? Because they were in Syria and the country they left doesn't exist anymore. Or they were, I mean, they're, 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 the, 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 the Rohingya people escaping Myanmar, they don't have a country. So while we look at localized problems, we look at problems for people who have countries. And at the same time, there's people who literally, who have amazing potential who are sitting in refugee camps in Jordan without any country because they, their passport expired and they can't go back to Syria to get a new passport. So there are, mashallah, like amazing people doing uh, interesting things there. Like I read about somebody who went and started a startup incubator in a refugee camp for Syrian uh, people to say, hey, they should make more money in alternate ways. So 
the opportunities for making an impact and making money is there. We just have to start refocusing our mind on what truly matters. So.